The great success story of our time economically is, of course, China. Um, everyone is saying, of course, that the 21st century is going to belong to China. Um, China's economic expansion, its economic growth and power, military power, um, have completely altered the, uh, the international scene in, in, the, in the world. Um, China rising is uh, the phrase du jour. Um, it's supposedly going to overtake the United States economically in the next, uh, I believe it's 40 or 50 years. Um, it's uh, expected to, to uh, be the military equivalent, at least, of the United States in about the same amount of time. Everything seems to point to the uh, inevitable rise of China. However, China is a dictatorship. It's a country that is absolutely riddled with corruption and um, nepotism, bribery, all these things, out and out theft. Um, it's often unclear where the authority of the state ends and that of the military begins. Um, the uh, top brass of the military often act as though they are the government. Um, it's also got a huge problem of, in, in terms of a, a very discontented uh, mass of its population. We're constantly rebelling. Something like 200 million people. Um, China's problems stagger the imagination when you think about them. Um, and there's really no way that the people can do anything about it, um, apart from their sporadic rebellions, which I believe are more than, than meets the eye, more than we understand here in the West, because, of course, the Chinese press is tightly controlled by the government. And uh, we often don't get a complete picture of what's going on. Um, and uh, China's government's response to any sort of crisis is inevitably force. Tighten the screws on, on the population. Um, so this creates a pressure cooker um, that is inhabited by a billion people. China may overtake the United States. It might also explode. I should not be at all surprised if the latter is what happens. Just across the Himalayas is the Republic of India. India has been a democracy longer than Spain has been. It's been a democracy much longer than any Eastern European countries. It's been a democracy longer than uh, probably half of the countries. Uh, in Europe and most of the countries in the world. And it's a real democracy. If you lose the election in India, if you lose an election, you're out. Um, people can criticize the government however they please. You read the newspapers and that's all you ever read is how corrupt the government is, how uh, incompetent they are, how stupid they are, how they don't know what they're doing, they're running the country into the ground. Um, it has a very, very lively political debate, India, and at both the federal and the state level, um, politics in India is pretty cutthroat and competitive. It also um, has a military that is something of a regional superpower, but the military, true to the British traditions that it inherited, um, stays out of politics, does not interfere at all. And because of these advantages, the free press, the, uh, the fact that the Indian middle class is highly educated, I don't, I don't know of any culture that, um, that uh, pushes education um, more than the Hindu culture, um, because of these advantages and because of the fact that India is a democracy and thus has all the safety valves to, to lessen the, <coughs> the pressure that could build up as a result of the enormous crises that India has to face the same as China does, makes me believe that long term, the future belongs more to India 
than it will to China. India is a democracy and it's a free country and it faces its problems and it's open to the world. It doesn't try to hide anything about itself. It doesn't try to, to exercise coercion to solve all of its problems. It relies on negotiation, hard work, endurance, and perseverance. Um, there are civil society organizations, NGOs, uh, this sort of thing, um, that deal with India's problems uh, extremely effectively. The charity organizations that are the homegrown NGOs in India um, are incredible in the way that they deal with India's problems. They don't rely upon repression. This creates an environment in which sustained moderate growth is possible. I think that because India is a dictatorship, er, I beg your pardon, because China is a dictatorship, it's more fragile than India is, and India is more likely to prevail in the long term because it's a democracy. Thank you.